Hallelujah! It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Hi, I'm Pastor Ian from the Living Word Church in San Pedro. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome, dear friends. We're about to have an amazing time in God's Holy Word. Is it too much for me to ask if you could kindly bow your heads and close your eyes just for a short moment? We want God to come in our midst. If He doesn't show up, we're just making a mess of everything. Father in heaven, how we love you, how we praise you, how we adore you. You're so good to each and every one of us, Lord, to every person on this earth. Thank you for the beautiful gift of your son, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our resurrected King, our miracle worker. Thank you for the gift of your precious Holy Spirit that fills us, that uses us, that makes you so real, Master. We humble ourselves before you. We ask your amazing blessing on every home, every heart, every life. I pray, Lord God, that you would give people hope, that you would fill their hearts with overflowing joy. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them peace peace that passeth understanding. I pray, Lord God, that you would lift up their countenance and bless them, change their situations, allow them to see life from your point of view, because from your point of view, Master, life is so good. Glorious. I bless every viewer in every home. I bless their household. I thank you in the name of Jesus, Father, that even as they watch this program today, something inside of them will change. Something in the home will change. Chains will be broken. The light of our glorious Savior will shine upon them, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Jesus, in your matchless name. Amen. My dear friend, today I want to, as we, as we move into the Christmas season, this is going to be my first uh, message for this month of December concerning Christmas. And I want to talk to you about the simple Christmas. You know, in the natural, nothing about the first Christmas was exaggerated extreme, embellished, elaborate, excessive, or even extravagant. The opposite is actually true. The first Christmas was very humble, meek, modest, mild, lowly, simple, ordinary, regular, and even common. Why am I saying this to open this message? Because we've been through hell throughout this year from the very beginning. And I know that there's a lot of broken lives and I know there's a lot of broken hearts. And I know that people cannot see a way out of their troubles at this moment. But I want you to understand that as bad as COVID-19 might have been, it has brought us to the place where we can, maybe, for the very first time, celebrate Christmas for what it really is. And that is the simple Christmas. Let's examine what the very first Christmas was like. And I am sure by the time we're done, you're going to see that you can celebrate a glorious Christmas with nothing. You don't need a thing to do that. 
In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 7, it says your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. Oh, how beautiful. Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, God Almighty, the Bible says, humbled himself and made himself nothing. That's the true Christmas. He stripped himself of the glories of heaven, the throne of heaven. The Bible says he became nothing. He took on a very humble position of a slave. You know, back in Bible days, slaves had absolutely no will of their own, no rights of their own. And the Bible says Jesus, to bring the first Christmas, his birth, became a slave. The Bible says he appeared in human form. You know, God has no boundaries. God is limitless. And yet, when he stepped into a human body, he actually confined himself to human limits. That's the simple Christmas. Jesus humbled himself. But you know, the Bible tells us a whole lot more about the simple Christmas. In John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14, it says in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was God, and Jesus became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now you might say, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. Jesus is sinless, pure, absolutely holy, absolutely righteous. And yet the Bible says he came down to be among the sinners. Everybody on this earth are sinners. And Jesus, a holy God, came down in our midst. He came to offer simple, humble, lowly state so you and I can realize that to enjoy Christmas, it doesn't have to be elaborate or excessive or even overbearing. We can have a humble, a simple Christmas. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. It says the virgin shall give birth. Well, which virgin was that? Was it from a rich family? Was it from a renowned family, a family of power, a family of influence, a family of might? Well, let's see what the Bible tells us. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 53, Mary responded, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. So Mary is actually making a contrast here between the rich and the poor, between the exalted and the lowly. And listen to what she calls herself. She calls herself a lowly servant girl. She calls herself humble, meaning having nothing, humble living. And she calls herself the hungry she says, and then the Lord has sent the rich away empty-handed. So listen, God is God. Jesus is Lord. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He could have come from heaven 
in one of the most splendid, spectacular, glamorous way. After all, he rules everything and he owns everything. But instead, how did he come? How did he come to be birthed into this world? He chose a humble, lowly servant girl who was hungry. She was unnoticed by anyone. No one looked to her, after her. She was just a humble peasant. And imagine, Almighty God chose to bring forth Jesus Christ. The very first Christmas, through a lowly servant, humble girl, a slave. And there Jesus came in, the very first Christmas. What a very simple Christmas it was. Very down to earth. Nothing for any eyes to be attracted to. And yet that was God's will, his choice, his desire. The Bible continues to say in Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Let's continue to examine. Because there was no room for him in the inn. Now, we all understand that because everybody was going all over their world at time to re-register according to the king's edict, that places were full. But, but let me ask you this question. Don't you think that if a prince or a king were coming, the inn owner would have taken somebody out of their room to make sure that the king or the prince or the governor, somebody of high estate, would be able to get that room? Of course he would. The thing is, is that Jesus came into the world in such a lowly form that not even the innkeeper thought anything about it. Not even him would change his decision in exchange for a good room or something. Now, thank God, he told Mary and Joseph, you can go and have your baby in, in, a, in a stable, in a manger. Now, what is a stable? I'm sure you know. A stable is a building where horses are kept. And then the Bible says that Jesus was born in a manger. That's a feeding trough. In other words, he was born in the building of a horses where horses are kept. And then even worse, he was born and he was placed in a manger, a feeding trough, where the animals actually drank water and fed and slimed all over the place. Now you think about that. All of us, we may not have had one of the best places to be born into, but at least we were born in a hospital. And yet the Bible says, Jesus, the very first Christmas, the birth of Christ, happened in an animal pen. Could you imagine that animal pen? That building of horses, the, the feeding trough where all the animals would slime and all the poo and all the scent and the sweat of, of these horses and animals. Could you imagine the scent that was in there? No father, no mother would ever wish that for their child. But you know what? Joseph and Mary had no problem with that. They humbled themselves and they accepted whatever was available. And God accepted the same friendless Listen to me, Christmas this year can be the most beautiful Christmas for you and for me and for everyone. We don't need to spend a dime, a dollar. We can enjoy the very first Christmas come alive again. The humble Christ coming in our midst as we humble ourselves before Almighty God. Scripture continues to say in Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 through 57, when Jesus had finished, he turned, he returned to Nazareth. When he taught, everyone was astonished and said, 
He's just a carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother. What makes him so great? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Notice again the details that is shared with us. The people knew him just as a carpenter's son. You know, back then, carpenters were peasants. Nobody noticed them. Nobody would esteem them. They were unknown people. Nobody thought anything of them. And yet the Bible says that the father of Jesus, the earthly father, was a carpenter. And Jesus was known as the son of a carpenter. Now, you know, we're talking here again about the Lord God Almighty who came into this world to be born. And yet, Everything about him. He came into the world humbly. He was birthed humbly. He chose a humble woman to be birthed from. Then he chose an earthly father who was just a carpenter. Listen, we, we have all been tainted with deceit by this all sinful world, thinking that Christmas has to be a lot of spending, that Christmas has to be a lot of obtaining all kinds of things and all kinds of wild parties and exchanging of expensive gifts. And now we are left flat thinking what we're going to do and where we're going to get money from. And yet I want to tell you with all my heart, Christmas is a humble Christmas. You don't need nothing but the presence of God. You don't need nothing but for the Lord to be in your midst. Could you imagine what the first Christmas was like as the glory and presence and splendor of Jesus the king of kings was birthed and all eyes beheld him and saw that glory that can happen for us today Christmas is humble it's lowly it's simple it's common it's nothing extravagant the world has messed us up and thank God, for the very first year, maybe, for many people in the world, they'll be able to experience the Christmas like none other. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 1, verse 45 through 46, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, and Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So watch this with me. Again, we're talking about the Lord of glory, God of all eternity, came down in the form of Jesus to this earth. That's what we know to be the first Christmas. He came and he was born through the womb of one of the most lowly women on earth. And then he was born within an animal pen. And if that wasn't enough, he was placed in a feeding trough, a manger for animals. And then he was given a father that was just a carpenter, a nobody. And then the Bible tells us God even chose for him to live in a place called Nazareth, which was considered to be a nothing town. Everybody knew that nothing worthwhile came from Nazareth. And when they heard that Jesus was of Nazareth, Nathaniel had to say, can anything, has anything good ever come from Nazareth? And the answer is no. But Jesus came from Nazareth. So the Lord chose a town that was very lowly, that was esteemed very lowly to be known from. Christmas, the very first Christmas, was a very simple Christmas. And that's what Christmas should actually be. 
Today we have been messed up with all kinds of, uh, of figures that have been presented to us that we think as Christmas should be when really it's not. And so as I continue, I want to encourage you. Let's become humble. Let's embrace the advent of Christ this year with humble, reverent hearts. With hearts that are prepared to make room for the Son of God and to tell Him that He means more than anything we could ever have in Christmas and that we want Him and that we need Him because it is only because of Him that there is a Christmas. In Luke chapter 2 verse 8 through 10, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. Then the angel said to them, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Hallelujah. Now watch it. Look at the trend, the simple Christmas. The Bible says now that the angels appeared to shepherds. Who were shepherds? in Bible days. Again, we learn that from David, King David. David was a brother of many other brothers and yet all the other brothers get to stay with dad and he was sent into the wilderness. He was sent out there where nobody could notice him, nobody could remember him to take care of shepherds. Shepherds were very lowly people, unrecognized, smelly. Nobody wanted them. Nobody cared about them. Nobody would certainly share any kind of information with them that was worthwhile. And yet the Bible tells us that God sent the angels to bring good tidings of great joy to who? Not to King Herod, not to the palace subjects, not to the high and mighty, even the Pharisees who taught themselves to be somebody. He sent them all the way out into the fields to announce to shepherds who were nobody in society and said to them, there's good news today. The Son of Almighty God is born. His name will be Jesus and he will save his people from their sin. Now be imaginative with me for a short moment. Could you imagine these shepherds jumping up in a hurry, probably abandoning those sheep for a brief moment and running to where that star led them to see that baby boy who is the son of God. They got the first look. Nobody else got the first look. It was the shepherds that got the first look of the baby boy called Jesus. Jesus came into this world, was born in an animal building. He was placed within a feeding trough of animals. He was born through the womb of a very lowly woman called Mary, was given a father who was a nobody carpenter, nobody cared about him. And then the Bible says that he, God gave him a town called Nazareth for him to live in in a while. And that town, Nazareth, nobody thought anything good could come from there. And then the Bible says that the first announcement of the birth of Christ was given to lowly, lowly, lowly shepherds. Everything about the first Christmas was simple. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So when Jesus grew up and started out his ministry, 
Jesus then said of himself, when, remember, when we talk about Jesus, we're not just talking about a prophet. We're not just talking about a human being. We're not just talking about a good man. We're talking about God Almighty in the flesh. And when Jesus grew up and started his ministry, the Bible says he went among the poor. You see, people that think themselves to be something, God knows that they would never want him. So Jesus came and mingled with the poor, with the humble. And he came to bring the good news. He came to bless them. He came to heal them, to save them, to deliver them, to give them a new start and a new life. What a joy that must have been the very first Christmas and Christ, the, the, the man of Christmas, the God of Christmas, never left his humble position. He walked in it all the days of his life. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 1, 27 and 28 says. It says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base and despised things of the world God has chosen. Listen, if you have never known this, I want you to understand from beginning to end, God uses simple things. He does simple things. He used, he used weak things. He used best and despised things. That's what God has chosen. So if you're feeling a little weaker this Christmas because there's no money, if you're feeling a little bit despised, if you're feeling just a little bit foolish because your life has been changed completely by COVID-19 and you just feel a little bit down, depressed, maybe worthless because nothing seems to be working out. May I tell you, my dear friend, you are the perfect candidate to see one of the most amazing Christmas this year because you are the kind of people that Jesus is looking for. You are the kind of people that God wants. He wants humble hearts. He want broken hearts. He want hearts that have come to the end of themselves that would look up and say, Jesus, I need you and I need you like never before. Friend, forget about the festivities. Forget about all the food. Forget about all the gifts. Forget about all that you do not have this year. And focus on the one thing that you can have this year. You can have the Son of God. God to come into your heart, to be in your midst. His glory, His presence, His splendor can be in your midst this year and you can celebrate a very simple Christmas with a very simple God and just enjoying the simplicity of life as the Lord Himself enriches your heart that you may know Him in a way you've never known him before. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, it says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Again, look at that. We're talking about the simple Christmas. God Almighty, the glory of heaven came down to earth, the Bible says. And where did he choose to shine his glorious light? The Bible says he chose to shine his light among the people who sat in darkness. Friend, this year has been dark. There's a lot of evil that has happened. All this pandemic and the virus has been so dark this year. So many people have died. So many people have lost their jobs. So many people don't have food to eat. So many are still sick. So many are losing 
hope. And yet the Bible says that in the very first Christmas as Jesus grew and became a man and he dwelt among humanity, the Bible says that he shined his glorious light among darkness. Friend, I'm telling you with all the assurance of my heart, we are ripe. We are at the point where the glorious, illuminating, healing, consoling, life-changing light of Jesus Christ can flood our homes, flood our hearts, flood our lives, our families, and allow us to see life from God's perspective and be bubbling over with joy, with peace, and with hope. Hallelujah. Christmas is not about the exchanging of gifts. It's not about parties. It's not about overindulgence. It's not about debauchery. It's not about dissipation. It's not about gluttony. It's not even about shopping or stressing. All of that we have fabricated ourselves. And that kind of Christmas is nothing short of a lie. You and I this year, thanks to COVID-19, can enjoy the Christmas, the kind of Christmas that God have always intended for us to have. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, my dear friends, God loves us. Jesus loves us. Christmas should be a simple, humble time of the year where sinners seek forgiveness for their sins as they truly repent before God. That's what the simple Christmas is. That's what the true Christmas is. Why was Christ born? He was born because of our sins. We are sinners. And the reason he was born was to die. And the reason he died was to pay for our sins. And now as we look at this Christmas, as we move forward day by day to Christmas Day, you and I should focus on the fact that indeed we are sinners, that Jesus Christ is the Savior. We should seek forgiveness. We should seek repentance from our heart that God can come and fill us and flow in us and use us and change us and allow us to know Him in a very deeper way. That's what Christmas really is. In Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, it says, Jesus went to Galilee to preach God's good news. At last the time has come, He announced. The kingdom of God is now. Turn from your sins and believe this good news. Jesus' very first message that he preached was to repent. Friend, repentance is a good thing. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that when we repent, refreshing comes from heaven. You know what it feel, you know how it feels to be refreshed? Have you ever been hungry and all of a sudden had a good meal? Have you ever been thirsty and all of a sudden had a good coke, a good drink, and you feel revived and you feel refreshed? That's what repentance does. And that's the very purpose of the simple Christmas. God humbled himself to our level so that we could come up to his level through repentance. He wants to give us new life. In John 14 and verse 6 it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, people are dying leaps and bounds with this COVID-19. We can't deny that. In our little Belize, we're having four, five, sometimes ten deaths in a day. Now, should you die at this moment? 
Are you ready to meet the Christ of Christmas? He is ready to meet you. He says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Nobody gets to see God the Father except through me, Jesus Christ, he said. And so I want to offer you Jesus. We don't need food for Christmas. We don't need gifts for Christmas. We don't need festivities for Christmas. We don't need music for Christmas. But we do need Jesus, not just for Christmas, but for every day of our life till the Lord calls us home. Because of Jesus, we will be with God the Father forever and ever. In John chapter 1 and verse 12 it says, But to all who believed in Him and accepted Him, He gave them the right to become children of God. You see, the very first Christmas was intended to save humanity. That's why Jesus came and that's why He died and that's why He rose again. Because we need to be saved. We're not all children of God like many people think. We're all creation of God. When we accept Jesus Christ in our heart, then we become children of God. Then we become a child of God. It is important to accept the Christ of Christmas who humbled Himself, brought the very first simple Christmas so that you and I can be raised up to meet with God forever and ever. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He wants your life. He wants to make you what you cannot be on your own. In 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it says, You know how full of love and kindness our Lord Jesus Christ was. Though He was very rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, so that by His poverty you could be made rich. By His poverty you could become rich. Now we're not talking about money here. We're talking about becoming rich in the mercy of God, the favor of God, the salvation of God, the grace of God, the love of God. God Jesus Christ emptied Himself so that we could be filled with the glory of God. Friend, Christmas is coming. And I know that we might feel a little bit different this year because as I have spoken to different people from their lips, this is what they say. I'm not seeing Christmas. Well, what are you looking for in Christmas? If you're looking for the wrong things, you won't see them. But if you tune in and you look for Christ, boy, you will see Christmas in all its fullness. So I want to take a moment and I want to pray with you. And my brothers and sisters, if you could help me to pray for people that might be watching today that are going through troubling times, whose lives have been turned right side up and they're finally seeing life for what it really is, would you help me pray for them? And those of you that need Jesus in your heart and you want to see the Christ of Christmas this year, I want to ask you, Bow your heads, close your eyes, put your faith in Jesus and pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, my life has changed for the worse. I'm at the place where I have nothing. I don't even know what tomorrow holds. I'm a little bit frightened. I'm a little bit discouraged. I'm a little bit depressed and down. I can't figure out what's going to happen, but Jesus, I heard today that you're the Christ of Christmas. You're the Savior of the world. You're the hope of humanity. Today I give you my heart. Yes, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, and I need you to forgive me as I truly repent today. I ask you to be my Savior and to forgive me. Lord, I turn my back on this world and I turn to you and receive you today. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, 
Christmas is a simple Christmas. Embrace it, receive it, and make it what it should be this year. Jesus loves you. And when you have him, your Christmas will be amazing on the inside of your soul. Dear friend, join me again next week, Sunday, as we continue to talk about Christmas. God bless you.